Leave me your leftovers? Two can play at that. So this is a short little tale that I'm comfortable sharing now that I left the company that this happened at. I worked at a smallish company for a good five years delivering gravel and asphalt with dump trucks. My boss, who we will refer to as Fred, was a nice enough guy. He would often fill in for us truckers when one of the four of us had to take a sick day or went on vacation. The only downside to Fred doing this was the man was always eating. It wasn't an unusual occurrence to get back from your days off to find food wrappers throughout your truck. As annoying as this was we put up with it until it got worse. He started leaving uneaten food in the trucks as well. We all confronted him about it and he apologized and said it wouldn't happen again. But it did or this would be much of a story. I wasn't able to come in over the weekend to run a load like I normally do so Fred ran it for me. When I got in on Monday I found a half-eaten rotisserie chicken sitting on my passenger seat. Now it didn't smell great but it wasn't nothing that rolling the windows down for a bit wouldn't fix. I was pissed and ready to trudge over to the dumpster when I noticed Frito Fred's work pickup parked on backside of the lot where we keep our heavy equipment. Not super uncommon for the boss to park there and get a lift from the owner of the company to check out a new job they wanted to bid on. Thinking he'll get the message I leave the chicken on his passenger seat. Now what I didn't know was that Fred did get a lift from the owner but that was Sunday night. See Fred was starting his two week vacation and felt the company truck would be better left at the company than in his driveway for someone to steal. He was wrong. I wasn't that to see but my co-worker told me he watched Fred open up his door after waving to his wife who dropped him off and with almost no hesitation started to vomit. My co-worker ran over to him and said he could smell it well before he reached the truck. I guess two week old rotten chicken baking in the sun sealed truck doesn't smell very good. I worked there for about three years after that whole thing happened and he was still trying to figure out who did it because he apparently didn't remember leaving the chicken in my truck that weekend. And PS he never left food in any trucks after that. Edit, thanks guys for my first award, I didn't expect this to be that well received. Just desserts, boss lady, eat it, anytime. Back in the 2010s I was living in Louisiana and going to school. I got a job at a daycare with the understanding I was training to be the assistant manager, then later the manager. They had a really high rate of turnover for a daycare. They just couldn't keep employees and didn't know why. I have a lot of experience and training in childcare and have done a lot of managerial work within the field, like maintaining supplies, creating lesson plans and activities, checking timesheets processing payments, etc. The owner was looking to hand over a lot of the day-to-day -day business, so that's where I was supposed to come in. The daycare that hired me was situated between the campus and my apartment, so it was also a convenient location. I could go to and from school to work, and vice versa. It seemed like it was going to be a decent place to work. I had the one-year-olds and I loved them to bits. It was easy to slip in the routine with the other teachers and the kids I had took to me very quickly. About a week in I ask about the training and my boss tells me I need to hit 60 days first. Okay, no biggie. They want to make sure I'll stick around and not just use them for training slash certs. So, I make it through the probationary period and there's still no mention of training. The room with the older kids always smelled like pee, but when I brought it up they just dismissed it as a kid who had problems wetting himself. All the time, apparently. The two-year-old teacher was always on her phone playing games. The kids would run wild the entire time while she sat with her head down, not watching them. I brought that up, as well, and was told it wasn't my business. The infant teacher was the only one that actually seemed to care and be invested in the kids, at all. As much as that bothered me it was also stuff I knew I could fix because I had done it before at other places. If we could ever get to the actual effing training, that is. I get only vague answers when I ask my boss about it, and it's really starting to irk the fuck out of me. I was also getting really goddamn tired of listening to my boss talk about the kids or their parents, calling one mom a slut because of how she dressed, or saying how weird this little boy in my room was. My room also shared a half wall with the kitchen, so when my boss was back there prepping breakfast or lunch I could hear everything she said. 
She was a newly single 55-year-old divorcee who just started to go out to clubs and drink again and pick up men. There's nothing wrong with that, I mean get it, girl. More power to you, but please stop talking about shaving your bombus cooch around my kids. She did this all the time, on the phone, to other teachers, even parents, like they wanted to hear about the grown and sexy club she found last night or how she's walking crooked from pulling a muscle in her crotch. I stuck it out thinking, okay, I can do this, she'll be gone most of the time anyway when I take over and I can implement some changes so she's not running people off with her attitude. So, one day I have a little boy, the same one she often tried to say was weird, who starts running a fever and has to go home. I call his parents and they tell me his grandparents are heading over to pick him up. He's a very quiet little boy, never makes any waves or anything. His parents are absolutely precious. His grandparents come in and are just as sweet. So, they come in my classroom while my boss is preparing lunch. She's talking to another teacher while I talk to the grandparents about his symptoms. All of a sudden we hear her talking about the little boy, how he stunk and what else do you expect from racial slur? The boy was Middle Eastern. I am stuck somewhere between absolutely mortified and thoroughly goddamn enraged. But I also have a bunch of little kids volleying for my attention and don't want to scare them. I clear my throat as loudly as humanly effing possible, but she keeps going talking about the parents and how she was glad she didn't have to deal with them right now, because somebody else was picking him up. I'm apologizing profusely to the grandparents at this point. I peek my head around the corner and tell her to shut up, then watch the couple leave with their grandson. She comes out of the kitchen and says nothing at all, just walks straight by without a word. I get the kids to sleep, then go on my lunch break. Just as I return, I hear her on the phone in the office as soon as I walk in. She is telling the boy's parents that I was the one in the kitchen talking about him, blaming every disgusting thing she said on me. Of all the nerve, the outright unmitigated gall, who the f does that? I was heated. I waited until the end of the day, walked in her office, and quit on the spot. I then reported a lot of the infractions and stuff I had seen that she never corrected, even though she was fully aware of the issues didn't think about her again, until six months later. I'm pulling through the jack-in-the-box drive through and I hear a familiar voice on the speaker. Nah, I think, can't be. I pull around and the my former boss is standing in the window wearing a drive through headset. This was funny for two reasons, one, when I left she wished me luck flipping burgers, in return I wished her luck keeping the place afloat, and two, she treated service people like absolute shit. Not enough ice in her drink? She'd call and complain. They forgot extra ketchup? Well, then she deserved free effing food. Just an absolute Karen any time she had the chance. I stop at the window and stare for a second. She looks straight through me at first. I gave her the money and said, Fancy meeting you here. She never acknowledges me, so I actually wondered if she recognized me. I asked, you don't remember me? She put her hand on her hip and looked over the top of her glasses at me the way I had seen her do countless times when describing her sex exploits from the previous night, and said, no. Should I? Dumb, I figured, she really doesn't know me. But nope, she definitely remembered, because she then threw my change, coins included, at me in my truck, and asked, will that be all? Yep, honey, I'm going to feast on this moment for years. Ignore me at my old job. Prepare to be ignored. When I was fresh out of UNI I was finding it difficult to find a job with my new degree due to my lack of experience on the level of employment I was looking for. After moving to a new area to be closer to family, I sent out a flurry of applications for the less skilled work I had done while going to school, and thus had a lot of experience in. These positions were still in the field of my degree, just on a lower level. I immediately had several interviews lined up and ended up taking a position in a company that was close to my home and seemed to have opportunities for professional growth in my chosen field. Upon starting my new job it immediately became obvious that there was a core group of six to eight women who were very cliquey and, as it turned out, would sometimes be bullies toward those not in the in crowd. The first few days they were nice enough. 
not warm, mind you, but professional, at least. I figure they were feeling me out to see what kind of person I am. Then one day came the test. I don't remember the exact details because this was about 8 years ago, but one of them said something intentionally abrasive and insulting to me, presumably to gauge my reaction. I remained calm, as always, and basically just gave crap right back to her, in a tone and manner that was not confrontational but firm, letting them all know I was not the easy mark they were looking for. They made a couple more weak attempts to get under my skin, but couldn't get the reaction they were hoping for, so eventually they mostly ignored me. As my time in the department was approaching the one year mark I began looking for a better position, and soon found one in the same company that was more in line with my career goals. It paid better and I didn't have to see any of the mean girls ever again, which was a bonus. After working at this new level for another year, this time in a management position, things were going really well. But I knew I now had more bargaining leverage after a year of management experience, and began looking for an even higher position elsewhere. It wasn't long before I was offered and accepted a job at a rival company that paid about two-thirds more than I had been making and also represented an upward move in my career. Roughly two years later I was interviewing applicants for a couple of openings in my department. My assistant called the next interviewee in, and guess who walked in to try and get a job under me? Not only one of the mean girls, but one of the worst of the bad bunch. I had witnessed her and her friends run off at least two other employees at my old position, and there was no way in hello I was going to invite that kind of poison into my department. The look on her face when she saw me was priceless, and inside I was smirking. But on the outside, I expressed surprise to see her, I actually was. Interviews were set up by our HR department along with my assistant. I greeted her warmly, like an old friend, and she visibly relaxed. We chatted a bit and I learned that our old department had been outsourced, and the clique had been split up. Turns out my old friend was not happy with the new position she had been forced into and had actually quit without having another job lined up. I got the impression she was badly in need of a new job. Smiling and still treating her like an old friend, I told her we would be in touch in a manner that insinuated that she was a shoe-in for one of the openings I had. As soon as she was out the door, her resume and application went right into the waste bin. I had all but forgotten her when I got a call about a week and a half later. She was inquiring as to whether I had made a decision yet. Still being warm and friendly, which is actually my nature, I apologized and told her we had actually hired two people who had more experience, but if it was okay with her I would keep her as you and if anything else came up I would call her. I spent the rest of the day with a slight spring in my step and I couldn't wipe the smile off my face. I never saw any of them again, so with this being a smallish industry I'm assuming she told her other cronies what happened, because no one else from their clique ever darkened my doorstep again.